Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is an E90 BMW. It's a 2007 335i with an N54 engine. In this video, we're gonna do some basic maintenance. We're gonna change the oil, the oil filter. We're gonna change the air filter, the cabin air filter, and the windshield wipers even. Just, so just basic maintenance. This video is intended for people who don't know how to do any of this. I'm gonna cover this as basically as I can, show you how to jack the car up, talk about what oil you're supposed to use, and just show you how to do all the basic maintenance on your vehicle. Let's get started. So these are the supplies that you're gonna need in order to do this service. Um, everything you see here I got from oembimmerparts.com and they have a whole package for changing your oil. They've got the seven quarts along with the filter. This oil is Castrol Edge European formula. It's designed for uh, direct, inject direct injected vehicles. This is also long life motor oil. This meets BMW's um, long life one specification. So if you are going to stick with the the oil change interval recommended by BMW, the 15,000 mile interval, you need to only use oil that meets long life certification. And it is a little bit more pricey. This kit right here, I believe sells for about $85. So yes, that's pricey, but you're getting two oil changes out of one. You know, they, they do all this testing. They guarantee that the oil is not gonna break down after 15,000 miles. It's like 15,000 miles or one year. If you're going to stick with that interval, you should only use long life oil, okay? Now, if you are not gonna use long life oil, if you're just gonna use a standard uh, synthetic motor oil that doesn't meet that long life specification, then all you have to do is make sure that it's SL, SN plus certified. Let me show you an example. Here are two different examples, Kendall liquid titanium, and here's uh, Kirkland motor oil synthetic, right? Both of these are actually going to meet SN plus certification. So there's SN plus that you see on this little circle on the back here. Same thing for this one. This one also meets SN plus. These ones, if you have a direct injected vehicle, you need to use something that meets SN plus. Now, if you're gonna use any of those motor oils, those are not long life motor oils, and I would recommend you change those every 5,000 miles. That's a good interval. Other than that, nothing too complicated here. They're just, you know, air filters and uh, wiper blades, so. Now let's look at the tools you're gonna need. In order to change your oil, you are gonna need a floor jack. I like these, these ones from Harbor Freight. They work pretty good. This is a three ton, I believe, but anything will do as long as it's a long one like this and not a super little dinky one like that one right there, that's not really gonna be long enough or, or low enough. So you wanna get one of these sort of low profile ones if you wanna raise a BMW. Secondly, you're gonna need an oil drain pan. I have this really big one from Walmart. I think it's a 23 quart. You don't really need that, anything will do. And finally, you're gonna need a pair of jack stands. You're gonna need a funnel for when you add the oil back in, paper towel and gloves, definitely useful. This is a special tool that you will need in order to do this. You cannot get the oil filter housing cap off without this tool. I will put a link to this on Amazon in the description. And then you'll need some screwdrivers, large one for getting the oil filter, the oil drain bolt cover off and a little one for changing out the o-rings and then you're going to need um, a ratchet with a 17 millimeter socket it doesn't have to be long like this but the long one really does help sorry for the interruption but we have to thank this week's sponsor which is oembimmerparts.com i love this website they've got super fast two-day shipping they've got multiple warehouses all over the u.s so they can get your parts out to you as fast as possible and i love their website it's just it's well categorized there's not a lot of extra stuff it's just all the most popular parts that you're going to need and they're the oem brands they do also have some quality aftermarket brands as well if that's what you're looking for so if you are in the market for bmw parts of any kind please check out oembimmerparts.com we're gonna jack the car up by the front wheels only and it's a good practice to just hit your emergency brake to make sure that the rear wheels can't roll backwards. So this car has a big belly plate. It's like a big plastic shield underneath that kind of hides all the oil leaks and all that stuff. And um, you can easily see there's a little cutout on it and there's a little metal sort of, you know, piece of metal, big piece of metal things sticking down. And that's your jacking point. So you just kind of look down, spy it, and you can jack the car up. I'll get you a better shot of what that looks like once it's up in the air. I'm going up 
you know, somewhat high. I, I just want to have room to be able to work under there and get under there comfortably. Right under here, this is your jack pad. That's where you're going to put the jack. And you just want to get your jacks up uh, the same on both sides, whatever that number should be. See what I've done with my jacks? I've written the number of the tooth on them. That just helps me to make sure they're both on the same, at the same height. So typically, um, if you haven't set your emergency brake, and you only jack it up from the front when you let it down the car's actually going to roll backwards a little bit so typically i'll i'll put the jack you know towards the edge towards the back and then the thing sort of the center ends up right in the middle of the jack or the jack ends up right in the center of the, the jack pad in this case we've hit the emergency brake so that shouldn't be too much of a problem but i'll still kind of put it right there and here it is from the other side now i will very slowly set it down There, looks good. So now obviously you have a real good look at what that, that jacking point looks like. Um, that's where you're supposed to jack it up from. All right, before we drain the oil, we actually wanna open up the oil filter here and just kind of let that drain down a little bit. Here, I've got my special tool and the ratchet. We're just gonna open this slowly. Not too fast. If you do it too fast and you just pull it up, it's just gonna kind of leak everywhere. You wanna get it to where like the air can sort of leak in and it let, that lets it sort of start draining down. In fact, we might even wanna have a little rag over there just in case, right here, because that's where it'll leak from. Doesn't hurt. Okay, we should be able to get it by hand now. So real slowly, I'm gonna do this. You hear that? There. Let that excess oil drain out of the filter. Okay. What I'm gonna do is actually pull the oil filter out and then I'm gonna put the cap back on just to make sure nothing falls in there. Guys, look what happened when I tried to pull the oil filter out of there. The center cap, the little thing in the center came out. This is a common problem on this particular uh, vehicle. A lot of oil change places will miss this and they'll just put the cap back in the car. And if you do that, your oil filter is doing nothing. It's not filtering your oil at all. So you gotta make sure to remove the center portion and stick it back in the cap. That is what it should look like. We'll just put that right there, just to make sure nothing falls in. Your oil drain bolt is gonna be underneath this little cover. We need to turn this with our screwdriver and it will pop free. I think I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the cover just for now. So I have recently driven the car uh, before I started this job. I just wanted to kind of warm the engine oil up a little bit. I didn't drive very long. I didn't get it all the way hot, just a little bit because the oil flows out better when it's warmer. Not absolutely necessary, but it helps. Now, before you crack this bolt loose, you want to make sure you've got your gloves on. You want to make sure you've got a paper towel to clean up and you want to make sure your oil drain pan is positioned correctly. Now we'll get our 18 mil socket crack that free and I needed that long ratchet just then because the last guy he made extra sure that thing was too tight so when this thing comes out it's going to come out in a stream like this so you always want to start with your oil pan maybe not even directly underneath the bolt just kind of over here a little bit you never know exactly how it's going to arc but I think it's going to arc kind of like that and it's also going to splash on the surface of this drain pan at me a little bit which you know that's going to be fun now when you're getting this out the easiest way to do this the clean the cleanest way is to push on the oil bolt a little bit push it in that way once you get it loose you'll be able to feel it it's no longer threaded in then when you choose you can just pull it away so here it's free it actually it actually slipped on me a little I didn't do that as cleanly as I would have liked, but still worked out fine. So you can see how it's sort of arcing a little bit. And as it, as it gets down to the end, I'll probably reposition the pan just a little bit. And it's not really splashing at me too much, which is great. The reason it's not splashing is because it's not glugging. And it's not glugging because we opened up the uh, oil filter housing. Also a good idea to open up the oil cap as well that'll also help it let me do that too forgot to do that thing let's it flow just a little bit better although it wasn't necessary in this case 
So we'll just let that continue draining out. So these filters, they always come with a new O-ring for the oil cap and a new crush washer for the oil, um, the oil drain plug. But it looks like this one also comes with a little O-ring for the oil cap as well, which is really great. The previous generation didn't do that. Check out the difference in the crush washer, the new crush washer and the old one. That's why you don't want to reuse them. This guy has flattened that, that thing out incredibly. So that's the new one. Make sure you remove the old O-rings from the oil filter housing cap and put the new ones on. You always want to change these. Don't forget to put your new oil filter in, snap it in all the way. You want to get some of the old oil on your finger and just wipe it around the new O-rings to lubricate them. Otherwise, they're going to tear when you put the new the, the cap back on. And give it a little cleaning. Once you get down to some drips like this, that's, that's all you really need to do. You don't need to wait until every drip has stopped. I apologize if I said um, 18 millimeters a second ago. That was... That's wrong, this is a 17. So you don't need to over tighten this thing, just make it tight. It's kind of a feel thing. And lastly, let's reinstall our little cover here. There we go. Now we're done under here. So I've lowered the car back down to the ground. It's always common practice when you're doing an oil change, lower it down to the ground before you go refill it because you're going to be checking the dipstick tube to see if it's, uh, ref if it's full. And you want to do that when the engine's level. This car has no dipstick tube. We're going to be checking the level electronically, but um, the fill capacity on this one is 6.9 quarts. So I'm just going to add in all seven that I have. Also, this is your first oil change. Make sure you add in one quart and then look underneath, make sure the whole, all the oil is not pouring out of the thing. That happens <laughs> if you forgot to put the drain bolt back in. And this is the reason why I say, you know, put the car back down on the ground before you fill it. Cause you should remember to put that drain bolt back in before you lower the car back down to the ground. Like you're going to be under there. Make sure you do. This is the way you're meant to pour oil out of these bottles, by the way, it doesn't glug when you do it this way. And then this filters, this uh, funnel is meant to do this. <laughs> kind of holds the bottle straight. I got that at Walmart. So some people really like to um, pre-fill the oil filter with oil before they put it back in. And you could totally do that, um, but it's really not gonna matter. The, the oil pressure builds up amazingly quickly. You, you wouldn't believe it. And um, yeah, the, the engine's not gonna be starved from oil at all, trust me. Now for the air filter, all we got to do is pop these guys off here, here, and here. And that lifts out super easy, real easy one to change. Now this is a, an aftermarket um, air filter that's reusable. You can wash it, spray it down with uh, like a special oil. It's a K&N, I believe. This might be a knockoff K&N, but um, this one doesn't really fit <laughs> this air box. It, it kind of shrunk a little or something. So it's kind of letting a lot of air bypass, not getting filtered. So that's, that's not too good. So we're just going to replace that with a paper filter. Should do the job much better. Snap our snaps back into place. That one is super easy to do. Now, this is where your cabin air filter lives. You're gonna have these tabs and you may or may not have them. This is already sort of a replacement I found in a junkyard. And this tab already broke off here. Now, um, I have eight millimeter bolts here. I think that what comes standard are Torx bolts. I think they're T30s. And this vehicle had some, but only three. And so I decided to just replace them with these, which are eight millimeters. And whoever had bolts in here before, I think they used larger ones and they sort of opened up the plastic a little bit. So even these bolts don't really hold that well. Which kind of sucks. Uh, I guess that ear is really serving no purpose. So you got to take the whole thing out 
and turn it upside down. And then this snaps in to the, to the housing right here. So you just unsnap these snaps. Pull that right out. Let's go get our new one. This one, we got a, I think this is a Cornico from OEM Bimmer Parts. So this one has these little ears on the, on the edges here. So those go down inside. That's what holds it up in the back. And then of course it clicks in here. Click, click and click. There we go, ready to reinstall. Ah, there's, there's a couple of things on this car that were just made a little bit, a little bit too cheaply. The, um, the value engineers came in, you know, they, they, they always design these things well, and then some, there's something called value engineering. Some particular engineer whose job it is to uh, like reduce the cost, he comes in and he says, this part can be 20% less material, and that part can be 15% less material, and inevitably they end up designing something like this stupid tab that just breaks off because it's just tiny. It's like if they, if they would have put just a little bit more material there, would have been fine. So, windshield wipers. Vallejo makes the OEM blades. That's what I suggest you go with. Now, let's see. I've never changed this particular type before. Should just be a little cover. Okay. These, oh, these are super easy. Look at this. You just, <laughs> so just uh, match the whole thing like that, you know? Like that. Let's see. Which side is which? The bigger side goes there. So just like that, man, how, how much easier could they possibly make it? You know, I think this is possibly the easiest one I've ever seen. Except for getting this snapped back in. Let's see. Oh, okay. The bottom goes in first. I see. All right. So unsnap it from the top. There's a little snap right here and that's, that's the way you're supposed to unsnap it. So just like that, man, that could not be any easier. Snap, comes out, where are we? We are, so you see the, the big side is where that pin goes. Just falls right in, man. Now that is one place where they re-engineered it correctly. Much, much better. Guys, let's do a close up of this. There's a, a little snap in here that you push off. You see that little, little guy in there? All you do is push up on it and this slides off. And then all you do is just remove this and you see the big hole right there. The big hole goes in, the little hole goes on the far side. So all you do is slip it in like that. Put your cover back in. You see there's a little tooth on the bottom of it that fits down in the hole right in there. And then you snap it on. Voila. Okay guys, now we need to reset the oil service interval. So I'm going to turn the ignition on here. We gotta sit through some warnings that I still haven't fixed yet. Now we're gonna push this button, hold it in, and we get to this screen. Now, yeah, you can toggle through with the toggle to the different things that you have, the different service uh, intervals that you have stored in the computer. So. That's the one for the oil. You see there were supposedly 11,000 miles left and we were supposed to change it on 1121, but we just changed it. So here to reset this, we're gonna hold in BC and let it go. See, now we're at that reset stage. Oh, well, so what, what was supposed to happen there is you're supposed to let it go and then hold it in and then it would reset. See that now it's set for another 15,000 miles or until 5, 2023. So I kind of just want to show you that again because you know we're still here. So if you push, if we hold in, because that didn't go exactly the right way. Hold that in, we get to this screen. We can toggle to here to the oil. We'll push BC and it says reset and then you hold it in and it'll reset itself. So of course it knows I just reset the thing so it's not gonna do it again for me. That's the procedure. And eventually this will just sort of go away. Okay, now to check the oil level, we're gonna put our foot on the 
brake and start the engine. It tells me that the parking brake's still on, so we're gonna release that. And you basically need to let this thing warm up um, before it will let you properly do the check. But the way to get to the check is we're gonna use the toggle to go until we get to that oil. Then we're gonna push the BC button. And now we're here. This is the oil level check screen. And you see that little clock, how it's kind of going around and around. It's doing its check. And it's really not gonna give you a level until the, the car's warmed up a little bit, until the engine oil has warmed up a little bit. So let's let this thing warm up and uh, we'll come back when we have a level. And there we have it guys. Our oil level is perfect actually. So that is it for changing your engine oil and doing basic maintenance on your E90 BMW. If you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm the 50s kid, thanks a lot for watching.